In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Today we are celebrating, especially for the English congregation, the feast of Saint Bennett Biscop, someone who brought a great deal of the heavenly liturgy to Britain, but more later. Before we begin to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our faults, our failings, our sins when we chose other than God. I confess, O oh my God, God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I am very sinner in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the blessed Mary of the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
Let us pray. Father, you endowed Bennett Biscop with wonderful gifts of nature and grace, which enabled him to bring the beauty of holiness to his people. May we who venerate him as our patron be devoted to the things of heaven and come with him to the beauty of eternal life. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Daniel. At that time there shall arise Michael, the great prince, guardian of your people. It shall be a time unsurpassed in distress since nations began until that time. At that time your people shall escape. Everyone who is found written in the book. Many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake. Some shall live forever. Others shall be in everlasting horror and disgrace. But the wise shall shine brightly like the splendor of the firmament. And those who lead the many to justice shall be like the stars forever. As for you, Daniel, keep secret the message and seal the book until the end time. The word of the Lord. I have waited, waited for the Lord, and he stooped toward me and heard my cry. Blessed the man who makes the Lord his trust who turns not to idolatry, or to those who stray after false rules. Sacrifice or oblation you wish not, but he is open to obedience you gave me. Burnt offerings or sin offerings you sought not. Then I said, Behold, I come. In the written scroll it is prescribed for me to do your will, O my God, is my delight, and your law is within in my heart. I announced your justice in the vast assembly. I did not restrain my lips as you, O Lord God. A reading from St. Paul's letter to the Colossians. Put on, then, as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, heartfelt compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience, bearing with one another and forgiving one another, if one has a grievance against another. As the Lord has forgiven you, so must you also do. And over all these, put on love, that is, the bond of perfection. And let the peace of Christ control your hearts, the peace unto which you were also called in one body. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, as in all wisdom you teach and admonish one another, singing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs with gratitude in your hearts to God. And whatever you do, in word or in deed, 
Do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, As the Father loves me, so I also love you. Remain in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love. Just as I have kept my Father's commandments and remain in his love. I have told you this, that my joy might be in you and your joy might be complete. This is my commandment, love one another as I love you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends, if you do what I command you. I no longer call you slaves, because a slave does not know what his master is doing. I have called you friends, because I have told you everything I have heard from my father. It was not you who chose me, but I who chose you and appoint you to go and bear fruit that will remain, so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you. This I command you, love one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Jesus says, the Father has sent me, and I love the Father. The Father and I are one. The Spirit shall be upon you. Love one another as I have loved you. What we are now talking about is we are now part of, integrated into the life of the Trinity. How then, as mortals, corporeal beings living in time and space, how then do we worship? You have the temple of the ancient Hebrews because there is God over there in the Holy of Holies. Here is Christ before us, the temple. How then do we worship? The heavenly liturgy, as you see in the book of Revelation, which today discussed endlessly in liturgical theology. Beauty, the harmony of being, love, which brings us to Biscop. Biscop was an angle, one of the people who came across as soon as the Roman legions had been withdrawn from Britain and utterly destroyed Romano Britain. Gregory the Great, St. Augustine of Canterbury, to bring them into the church. Biscop not only built a monastery and enlivened the life of the people, but he made a number of trips between the cold, misty north of England where it was and Rome several times, and he brought with him scribes, scriveners, books, tapestry, paintings, masons, glaziers, those who make windows, to worship as best we could in the heavenly liturgy. Finally, 
not only a number of valuable relics, but he brought, I think, the greatest gift of all. He brought the chorister. of Lateran, of the, po the Pope's choir master. And the Pope's choir master taught the monks, the people, the Gregorian chant, not the Benedictine chant. No, it's, that's why it's called Gregorian. He brought the most modern, if you will, the most beautiful way of worshiping God. St. Augustine says, when you sing, you pray twice. And he built monasteries, churches, endowed with the beauty, the harmony, the love between ourselves and God. And here come the Vikings. I will not bore you with the distressing political history of all this. I think you can imagine. But through all the strife, through all the horror, through all the bloodshed, all the way down to now. The song, the beauty, the music of that relationship of love between ourselves and God continues on long after all the swords are rust. There is the love of God which remains as we all go about our business today. Try to keep that song of love for God and of God in your hearts amidst all the Vikings who are trying to tear down everything just for the sake of doing it. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. We bring before you, Lord, these tokens of ourselves. Bless them as you bless the life of St. Bennett and transform us into the image of your Son who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as on the fe festival of St. Bennett Biscop, you bid your church rejoice. So too you strengthen her by the example of his holy life teacher by his words of preaching, 
and keep her safe in answer to his prayers. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and willingly entered into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which we poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Thomas, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters, who have fallen asleep in the hope of resurrection, and all have died in your mercy. Welcome them to the light of our peace. Have mercy on us all, we pray, the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostle, and all the saints who feed you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co heirs of eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and then. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Let us pray. Lord God, we have received from your altar the sacred body and blood of your Son. Strengthened by these sacraments and inspired by the monastic example of St. Bennett Biscop, may we hasten with him along the way of salvation. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Amen. Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.